Okay, hi everyone, it's Judith here and hello. Um, I'm caught doing this video today because um, I've been seeing some stuff in the papers recently and um, also been talking to some people um, with clients and potential clients about past experiences with coaching, with empowerment courses, and particularly around empowering women. And I just thought um, some of you might be interested in getting coaching um, to look at how you can be a more confident person, looking at how you might um, you know, get your business going or develop your skills in different ways, um, to move into leadership, all sorts of reasons that you may, or just you know, be happier. And there might be all sorts of reasons you wanna work with a coach. Um, and yet there is some risks involved with engaging someone to do this work with you uh, that I thought I'd like to cover off with you just as a bit of um, a public service really to explain um, what are some possible red flags when you engage a coach and hopefully that might help you to make a decision that you're really happy with and more importantly is going to give you the value that you want out of these um, relationships. Coaching isn't cheap, one-on-one -on -one coaching um, is normally anywhere between $100 an hour, you know, it can go up to thousands of dollars an hour. Um, most people will charge what I charge, which is between $150 to $50 an hour. Um, but you know, you do engage for four, six, eight sessions. So that can be a serious whack of money. And um, you don't want that to go to waste. Um, so here are some things that I would suggest you look out for. Um, the other thing is that I'm also really concerned about this area too. It is unregulated. And just um, some of you might have read, I'm not going to post any of this because it can be really triggering, about the Nexium, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, the case against the guy who ran this program that ended up being basically um, a sex slavery ring and exploited a lot of women, um, mostly in America. And it was promoted as a women's empowerment program and a lot of women were involved in recruiting other women to be there. It turned out to basically be a cult and uh, women gave a lot of money, they were exploited, they were sexually exploited um, through this. And luckily the people behind it have now been charged, they have been um, uh, judged and they have gone to prison. Um, the leader of this, who was a man, he's gone to prison for life, like 120 years sentence or something like that. So um, there has been justice in this case, but um, it's not to say that there's potential for this to happen again, and particularly in the area of coaching, because pretty much universally it's unregulated as a profession. Uh, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of really good people working in it, but that does mean that it is open for exploitation. So um, just a few things to watch out for if you are thinking about engaging a coach. Okay, we don't want to go on forever, so let's dive in. The first thing I want to reiterate, and I do this with all my potential clients and my clients over and over again, is that coaching is not therapy. Coaching is not therapy. Coaching is about getting support to move forward with your goals. Coaching is not a therapeutic relationship. You may get benefits out of it that help you with a well-being, a mental health issue, but that is not the purpose of coaching. I always reiterate in my coaching agreements that my clients are responsible for their own well-being and therefore if they have a mental health issue, it is their responsibility to um, ensure that that is being managed in a way that makes sense to them. Um, so that is the first absolute in any coaching program. You are not there to get therapy. You are not there to heal. You are not there to um, deal with mental health issues, diagnosed or undiagnosed, like depression, anxiety, trauma, etc. As I said, you may get benefits that support you if you are managing one of those issues but it is not therapy. And I say this as a consumer of mental health services. 
I um, was diagnosed with what was used to be called clinical depression. It's now called major depression, which basically means it's an ongoing issue in my life um, and it comes up intermittently. So I have treatment for that in the form of one, antidepressants, which are prescribed to me by a psychiatrist, and two, I also do psychotherapy to provide additional support with depression and living with depression, really, and how I manage that. I've also um, experienced eating disorders in the past, and I've also experienced um, panic disorders. So I have consumed mental health um, services. I've also consumed coaching services. And they are completely distinct. Yes, some of my coaching that I have been part of has um, provided great support in managing my depression and managing um, panic and managing um, the eating disorders. How am I recovery from that? However, coaching is not therapy. So anyone who approaches you as a coach and um, seeks to engage you in talk about trauma or anxiety or depression and uh, professes to have a therapeutic background in that area, you need to check that their qualifications are in that. Um, I'd include nutrition and diet in this as well. Like, you know, get like get a dietitian, <laughs> like get somebody who's really qualified to deal with these things rather than somebody who's a health coach or whatever and is possibly delving into things that they really are not qualified to deal with. Okay, so that's number one. Remember that coaching is not therapy and that if you are seeking therapy to deal with a mental health issue, please seek appropriate support. A mental health issue or a physical health issue, please seek appropriate, qualified, registered, regulated support. Okay, that's for your own safety. Okay, okay, if you're still listening, <laughs> these are some of my other red flags. If you still want to engage a coach to help you to reach your goals. And that's really why you want to coach. You want to achieve something, you want to change something, you want to create something. That is what a coach is for. Okay, so what are the other things to look out for in, in somebody you are considering to do coach? The first thing is, how do they listen to you? What is the quality of their listening to you? Do you feel heard? Now, <laughs> just to watch this, because some people who are trained in things like NLP and etc., and I'm not saying anything wrong about those processes, are trained to say words like, I heard you, or I see you. And, um, which is great. I could sometimes use those phrases too, but it is actually more that you have a total experience of being heard and a good coach would um, probably recap or, um, you know, summarize your points and just want to check in that they have actually heard you correctly about your issues. So number one, please make sure that you are heard. And number two, which goes alongside this, is that in a good, healthy coaching relationship, the client is the one who does most of the talking in the session. So even if it is within a consult where you are just checking out the, the coach, it is really um, their role still to listen to you and allow you the space, a safe space to express what is going on there. So if you are meeting with a coach and they mostly talk about themselves and they mostly talk about their achievements and they mostly talk about how great they are and what an awesome person they are, that for me would be a red flag. That's not somebody I would necessarily want to trust um, or trust to hear me and actually support me with my goals. Okay, which gets me to a couple of other points. The one, really important, it is the role of the coach to create a safe space, a container in which the client can feel safe to express whatever they want. Whatever the client wants to express and wants to explore. 
So the, the coach has to create the space. They have to give the conditions of confidence, confidentiality, um, that boundaries are going to be respected in this space, that the client has the right to say yes or no to going into territory, that at all times the client is running the session. The, client, the coach provides a framework and does the provocation and ensures, facilitates the conversation. But the client is the one who sets the agenda for a session and it is the client that sets the boundaries for the session as well. So if you don't feel that you have the freedom to do that within a safe space, if you don't feel respected, if you feel like your boundaries have been crossed and you haven't been able to say, no, I don't want to go there. If you don't feel confident that you can have that conversation with that coach, I would say that's another red flag. You have to feel that this person has got your safety and your interests and your agenda at the center of what they're doing. Um, and that gets me to, I guess, the next piece, which is that this a coaching process, even if the coach has a process, that is, they know that basically if you do these sort of exercises and these kind of steps, you will probably get to where you want to go. Um, and they have an expertise in doing that. For example, I have an expertise in coaching people around their career development, about their working lives and how to have more satisfying, um, joyful and successful working lives. I've helped people to get promotions. I've helped people to get jobs that they want. I've helped people to navigate change. Now, in doing that, I have some exercises and processes that I recommend most people do to help them get the things they want which generally is clarity of vision. It's about getting confidence that you can do that. And then it's about the courage to really invest and commit to this change. So that's my process. Take six weeks or six sessions, blah, blah, blah. That's the package I sell. And you know, I, it works, <laughs> it works. I have lots of positive outcomes. I can show you evidence that it works. However, <laughs> within that, there is so much scope for a client to tell me what it is they want to work on at the session, what it is that is most important to them at this point in time, what it is that they definitely want to get out of that and I can tailor the program for it. This is in one-to-one -one coaching, I guess I should explain. So in one-to-one -one coaching, there should be all the space in the world for the client, for the coach to respond to your needs. If you get the sense that you're going through more of a um, process that is very set and there is no flexibility around it because you're going to do this exercise and this exercise and this exercise and this exercise. That would be a little bit of a red flag for me because I'm not going to say that it doesn't work because it probably does. It, hopefully they've got evidence that it works and if you've seen the evidence in terms of testimonials etc you go okay that kind of works. But in one-to-one -one coaching which is normally the premium product people offer you should be getting um, something very tailored to your own needs and it should be constantly responding to where you're at and responding to your needs. And a final thing, you should feel confident that the coach is going to challenge you in a way that will motivate you to action. Now, what I mean by that is that I always ask for permission for my clients, from my clients, to challenge them within session. Um, and by that I mean, um, you know, it could be something as simple as I'm just going to interrupt you now because while this story you're telling me is really interesting, in the interest of time, I think, you know, we might park that and get into this, you know, and just try and move the conversation along. So it may be a time management session. Or... It might be that somebody have I've asked somebody a question and they're starting to answer the question and then all of a sudden they go, oh, look over there. So they've deflected away from whatever it is we were starting to explore. And so sometimes I might just go, oh, that's interesting. I just saw that you kind of went in a different direction than where we were. You know, would you like to go back to where we were? Because that was where we were getting the insight. Um, and we might revisit where we that anecdote and normally people go oh yeah I was sort of dodging it because I kind of felt a bit uncomfortable and like, that's okay but do you want to go that way and continue to explore this issue or do you want to explore something new 
And as a coach, I should be quite open and going, actually, I want to go that new direction and, and go with that, but then also ensure through my skill to make sure we get back to where we need to go. So that's that sort of sense I got. You need to be open to be challenged, but you also need to know that the challenge is going to be very respectful and not um, uh, shame you in any way or criticize you. This is really fundamental to the coaching relationship. It is a relationship of trust. And so you are trusting that coach to give you the respect that you deserve and you expect. So I know there are some coaches in the world who go, oh, no, I go really hardball. Like, you know, I don't let anyone get away with deflections. I'm really tough. And you know, that's fair enough. You know, that's a style of coaching. Like, you know, I'm just gonna go straight to the straight to the nitty-gritty issue. However, sometimes, often actually, um, there's a real reason for that deflection. And that's preserving something that just might not be ready to emerge within that session right then. It just might be that actually there's some something that needs to keep that in a safe internal space for that point at that moment and it will come true come forward when it's ready a good coach understands that and allows space for it and you know co you know and coaxes it out with you but in not a way that should shame you or make you feel anxious or overwhelm you etc you may experience all sorts of emotions within a coaching session. I've seen, I've had people cry. I've had people get angry. I've had people, um, you know, their body language has been, you know, fully engaged and then way back in the chair with the arms crossed and I don't want to know anything about what you're saying here. I'm sorry, excuse my lighting. It's the end of the day. I just wanted to get this done though. And um, that's okay. That's, that's all perfectly fine. Experiencing an emotion and being with an emotion is part of life and that's something that a good coach would also, you know, hopefully be teaching you to do. But um, you shouldn't feel ever angry at your coach. You shouldn't feel like you're being criticised or blamed by your coach. You should never feel under attack or shame from being with your coach. They are meant to be on your side at all times. So while they might be challenging you and, you know, trying to provoke new ways of looking at things and encouraging you to reframe and look at, your, you know, your situation from all different points of view and giving you exercises to do that and helping you unpack and debrief, etc. To get the insights that will help you move on past the places where you might have got stopped before. It should never bring up shame. So for example, I once rang a woman who somebody had recommended to me to provide some marketing coaching. And um, I rang her and I was late. I was actually late to make the call. She didn't offer to ring me. I had to ring her. So I think it's a little bit of a red flag actually. They should ring you. Anyway, different ways people run their business, that's fine. Anyway, I was a bit late to get on the call. And she talked to me for a while and then she said, you know, I didn't really want to work with you because you were late on the call and I don't like people wasting my time. She said that in the first consult, the first conversation we had. I don't want to work with you because you were late on a call and I felt you weren't respecting my time. At that point, I kind of went, well, I think we're not really on the same page, so let's just call this quits because there was no way I was gonna work with somebody who would absolutely shame me in that way about my time management. That was so inappropriate and so um, kind of disgusting, actually, that she behaved that way with a potential client. And I don't think that is an ethical and appropriate way for a coach to behave. So I guess this gets to the fundamentals of what I'm talking about. Coaching should be done within a frame of ethics. As I said, it's not regulated, but the International Coaching Federation does have a framework of ethics and a good coach would 
be signed up to it, even if they're not a member of the ICF, and I'm not because there's a lot of issues within that, but the ethics framework, I subscribe to it and I've been trained within their, their processes as well. So, you know, I align myself to their ethical framework and a good coach should be aware of that and also aligned to that framework. But more so, they should just behave in an ethical, respectful manner at all times. You may develop a relationship of great rapport and you might share some jokes and da 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 da. And for you, it might be okay if the coach swears or it may not, and you should be okay to be able to say that. But it, overall, it should be within a framework of mutual res of respect and um, safety and ethics. You should feel safe at all times. If you are feeling exploited, if you are feeling at risk, if you are feeling vulnerable, if you are feeling pressured, if you are feeling ashamed, if you are feeling criticized, if you are feeling that this is not working out for you, you have the right and the responsibility to say no. You can um, not go ahead with the program at any time. You can stop the program at any time. An ethical coach should refund you money if you've paid in advance. Um, so never, ever, ever sign up to somebody who's not going to do that. And also, and this is really important, if you have done a consult call or made an inquiry about coaching and then you get followed up and pressured into making a purchase, and you know what I mean by that, that's that, why haven't you signed up? Don't you think you're important enough? Don't you think your family's important enough? Don't you believe in this? Don't you believe in yourself? If you are hearing any of that and you've got to make the decision today, this deal ends today, if you're getting that sort of precious salesmanship, I would just walk away. Of course, everyone makes offers, you know, sign up to this by the end of the month and you'll get 20% off. Sign off to this and, you know, you get four sessions for the price of three. Everyone does that. That's fine. Um, I do it, you know, because I, I like to make my courses accessible. And I know that sometimes there's a need and I would like more people to be using my services. <laughs> One, because it's good business for me, but also because they'll get the results. But the most important thing is I never pressure anyone to sell. I might follow up, but I don't pressure. And if you feel pressured by your coach about the sale, then I would suggest that you really need to reconsider if this is the partner that you want to take you on a journey of change in your life. Because that's what the coach should be. They should be a partner with you about the changes you want to make in your life. Not about what they think you should be doing, but about what you want to do. All right, that's probably enough from me. But there's a few flags to look, at, um, to look out for um, if you're engaging with a coach. What you should be looking for is somebody you feel you can trust. Somebody who sh um, deals with you with respect. Somebody who um, gives you... Um, absolute assurances about confidentiality um, that is somebody who has preferably some proven results so you know that what they're saying they're doing they can actually do and um, you know they've got outcomes I, I know all coaches have to start somewhere but you know good ones they work for free until they can get the outcomes and show that they can do this if you're working with somebody who did a weekend course and then thinks they can call themselves a coach and then start charging people, <laughs> just walk away. Please just walk away. Don't encourage that. So look for somebody who's done some in-depth training. Look for somebody who's been supervised. Look for somebody who has a, a reputation <clears throat> and some um, tangible outcomes. And that overall, you get a sense that you can trust them. Um, okay, that is enough for me. If you want to know more about what to look for and what not to look for in coaching, um, I'll have some information on my website very soon. Um, but I think I need to go. Okay, thanks very much.
Um, oh, also, you can call me anytime. Um, contact me via my website, www.albanylane.com.au. Um, you can contact me there, um, and I'm more than happy to um, answer questions. If you're considering coaching with somebody else and you just want to check out what they're like, I'm really happy to do that because I want to make sure you're getting a good service. And of course, if you want to know about what I do, you know, I'm really happy to talk to you about that as well, just so you're aware of what my services are and how they can support you. Um, and that's obligation free, really obligation free. You have no obligation to come back and deal with me. Um, I just want to make sure people know what I do and to make an informed choice, an informed choice. Okay, that's it. Obviously, I've got a dog that wants my attention, so um, I'm going to go. Have a lovely evening. And I'll talk to you soon.